Hello and welcome to the product demonstration for the Game Maker User Interface Framework. Currently we're supporting um, windows, uh, buttons, text boxes, check boxes and switches. So you can use these to create uh, quite a vast variety of uh, interfaces for your games. Now it's very easy to use, you simply import the uh, project by using the file import project button and you'll receive a bunch of folders in your Game Maker project called UI Framework. Uh, from there you simply uh, copy and paste the base buttons and base windows and parent them and then any future updates you can just import again and that will update without affecting your scripts. So just a quick demonstration of what it currently supports. Uh, so this is the game, this is a game running using the window framework and the user interface framework at the moment. It currently it supports uh, click rejection so if a window is covering another window and you do click, like there's a button back here behind this one, the event won't fire. Uh, if you are on the current window, the events will fire. It's written in a interface basically that uh, works quite similar to the way Microsoft's.NET components work. So when you're using a text box, you can simply say text box underscore username dot text and same for password, you can say checkbox dot checked equals true and false and these values will update themselves. Um, the same for these toggle switches, these are just on and off, so you can just basically say it's a it's a bool value which is uh, on or off. And I've just got a, a little demo here which shows you basically the states of these buttons, so when you click them it generates this um, binary string here. And as you change these they'll all return to zeros. And there you go, and as we change these you'll see them update. So again the click rejection, um, if this window is behind this window and I click where those buttons were you'll see that their states haven't changed unless the window is actually active and selected. We also have uh, proper depth ordering, so if one window is in front of another window you don't see it, but when you do click on a component for the other window, that window then takes focus. Uh, so something i also quickly show you guys, uh, the text box functionality, we have standard uh, full ASCII support, so basically hello my name is Ryan. We also have uh, backspace support, so you can tap the backspace key and you'll get one backspace, but it also has uh, multiple backspaces, so if I hold down the button, there's a slight pause and then it repeats itself multiple times. When the field is empty or unfocused, it returns back to its default string, which can be customized uh, to your liking, and same for the password field as well. The password field also supports protected variables, so when you select this field here, you can type in your password and it uh, stays protected and for the username field you could enable that as well not that you would want to so I'm just going to show you guys a test test username test password and if I select this login button you'll see that we're able to easily retrieve the both text in plain text format for both of those fields even though the password field was encrypted in terms of performance um, currently everything is drawn using uh, sprites and basically uh, <clears throat> basically uh, very minimal overhead so currently this is running at between looks like between 900 and 2000 frames per second on my PC as you can see from the game makers uh, performance monitoring tool here very little usage and overhead by drawing these windows even when they're animating where it looks like we're receiving about 3000 frames per second when the animations are enabled uh, that's pretty much it we also have the checkbox function as you can see when I click that it uh, enables and disables so yeah using these components is extremely easy I'll just give you guys a quick demo of how the uh, login component worked so I've got a button here called button test 2 in the create event you can set up your parameters so I just simply inherit the event and say text equals login this could say show and as soon as I run the game again you'll see that that updates the text on the button now the button says show uh, and in the left pressed event uh, you simply have to, in order to get it to work correctly with the UI system, you basically inherit the event, then you can say if enabled and UI hook ID. And what this UI hook does is this handles the uh, depth ordering, so if a window is in front of that current window and you do click on the button or where the button would be in screen space, it automatically rejects that click and uh, absorbs it on the front window. So if the button is enabled and you are able to click the button, that's what the UI hook button, the UI hook command does there. Uh, then we execute our our own code here, which basically says your credentials are. And to access the uh, text boxes, it's simply in the same as uh, Microsoft's .NET format: text username.text, 
and text password.txt. In the same way, we could um, quite easily create another button. So I'm just going to show you guys uh, a very quick demonstration. If I duplicate this button and say set, we'll call this button underscore set user. Uh, and in our left press event, we can just say something like text underscore username dot text equals I was set programmatically oops programmatically should I just say set programmatically it's easier there we go uh, and we'll place that button into our room simply go down to the button button set user we'll tell you what we'll just uh, place it here we'll do one other thing to note is that all of these components are aligned to an 8x8 grid which makes them easily centerable and alignable so they can line up with each other um, they will all center and line up perfectly so you can center them left, center them right and that works for all of these components uh, including the checkboxes and things like that uh, also being aligned to an 8x8 grid means that you can also set your snap in the engine to 16x16 16 16 or 32x32 um, so I'll just show you that button real quick. Uh, if I click this button here, you'll see it says set programmatically and that all interfaces with our existing code. So basically when the text has been set, it um, it, it works with the uh, user input fields. So if I were to click on that, I get back to here. <coughs> Something else to show you guys, um, when it's also not selected, the text grays out just a slight bit and if it's not entered, it even grays out further. So if you do enter text and then you deselect it, you'll see it shows you that you're currently actively editing that field. This is good so that users can actually see what they're editing. Um, and it also supports the password feature, like I mentioned before. Buttons also support a function uh, called enabled, again, in the style of Microsoft.net. So you can just say uh, button.enabled equals false and the button will gray itself out. So a quick demonstration of that. We'll just overwrite our set user button here. Um, so after we set the text on our text username, we'll also disable that uh, test button. Button underscore test two dot enabled equals false. And this will disable that button there, which makes it no longer clickable. You'll also notice that the event no longer appears. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, if you uh, do like this product, then please feel free to try it out. Uh, there is, There should be a HTML5 demo uh, for you guys to try. And yeah, please let me know what you think.